appreciate again you being here today. God bless you if you're visiting here. We want you to know how much we appreciate that as well. And uh, just an honor to have you here in our services. Thank the Lord for you. Appreciate the good bonfire Friday night as well. And uh, just a good, good weekend. We want to ask you, if you will now this morning, to take your Bibles and turn to the little book of Jude. It's back right before you get to the book of Revelation. Jude is the threshold to the future. And I believe we're living on the threshold. You ever heard a preacher make that statement? We're on the threshold of eternity. Getting ready to step through the door. I believe we can say that because of many of the truths you find written about in the book of Jude. Chief and foremost in the book of Jude is the teaching that there is going to be a great apostasy and turning and falling away in the last days before Jesus comes. I can't remember a time when it's harder to, to get families grounded and settled in a good Bible preaching church than it is today. And for people maybe who, you know, attended churches like this church all their life, many, many years, they're falling away. They're slipping out. They're looking for something new, something different, looking for a change. And the Bible teaches us there's going to be a great turning away, an apostasy. And uh, we're on the threshold of eternity. But I want to encourage you today, as we think about our mission conference, you know, a church like this that has such a rich heritage in missions, it's, it's easy for us to forget uh, how important this is and how privileged we are to be able to be a part of it. And also that it is something that God has commanded through His Word that we be involved in the Great Commission our Sunday school classes, I've given our youth classes a project for the mission conference and uh, they're going to make some displays and they're going to describe or explain the cycle or the chain of the Great Commission. It's cyclic. God's such a great God that His plan to reach the world and His plan for the church self-propagates one another. If we'll do what God asks us to do, our churches will grow and they'll be healthy and they'll continue to move forward and souls will be reached. But if we break any links in those chains, then the whole thing loses uh, the power that it has behind us. We as individuals have the responsibility to uh, share the Lord Jesus. He said, ye shall be witnesses unto me. And he spoke to the church. And you adult classes in Sunday school this morning took you to the book of Acts chapter 1. Do you know that he gave the great commission to his disciples, which were representatives of his church and the individuals in his church before you ever read anything about missionaries being called? It wasn't, it wasn't until 10 years later God called Paul and Barnabas to be missionaries. And it's the, it's the church and it's the individuals in the church that carry the main responsibility of reaching this world with the gospel of Christ. It's you and I in our church. And uh, we don't want to forget that. We want that uh, to be a passion in our heart and our life to make a difference in the world. I want you to think about that today, the compassion we need to make a difference. That's the message, the compassion we need to make a difference. Jude, chapter, or Jude verse 20 is where we're going to read. Jude verse 20. And the Bible says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. We'll step right there. Let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for a good day and for a great start to the month. <clears throat> Lord, we pray today that, Father, you're going to just empower your word and meet with us here today. God, may the hearts of your people be open and your, our ears attentive, God, unto the words that, God, we find in your word. Lord, may we be uh, equipped today and may we be encouraged to do, Father, the uh, the responsibilities that are ours involving, Lord, this great commission that we've been given to reach souls with the gospel. 
Lord, today, may you lay souls on our heart. May every card that's out there in those Roundup packets be filled out and turned back in, just demonstrating, Lord, just help us to see, God, in our hearts as a church, there's a compassion for souls. There's, a, there's an awareness of the lost and the need of families and individuals to hear the gospel and to be in a Bible-preaching church. Lord, we pray that each of us will take the time to, uh, to consider that. And Lord, lay souls on our hearts. Lord, may those cards come in and may we begin to pray and invite these people to come. And Lord, we just ask today that, God, you would just uh, equip us, Lord, to see that, God, we, uh, we need to be uh, involved in this in a personal way, making a difference, passing out a gospel track or inviting folks to the services, coming, God, with our heart and life right with you, having prayed about the meeting and, Lord, expecting, God, you to work and then, Lord, being obedient to you when you speak to us. And so, Lord, we just come today, God, just needing you, Father, just to have your hand upon us as a church and as a, as a body, as we, Lord, have already had the groundwork laid in our revival meeting of what the need is. God, we need to be living an abundant, spirit-filled life. And when we are and when we do, God, the work of missions will come, God, as, as a very easy thing for us. And reaching souls will be, Lord, something that's very, uh, very uh, easy for us to be involved in. And so, Lord, we just pray today that, God, you'll help us, change us, do what you need to do. Lord, we pray, God, that you might instill within our hearts a compassion that will make a difference. And today, Father, maybe somebody's come to church, but they've never come to Christ. They've never trusted you as their Savior. We pray today, Father, they'll see, God, that they can be saved and must be saved. And Lord, they'll come to you today before it's too late. Lord, we pray about this young man, this young boy at campus, at a college, seemingly, Lord, a, a place, an environment where, uh, Lord, there would be no harm or anything could come to him. And yet, God, we don't know. Our lives appeareth for just a little while and vanisheth away. We have no promise, God, of, uh, of how much time we have. But, Lord, we do have the, have the understanding we must be prepared and be ready. And, God, may folks be ready for that day when we leave this world. We just now commit this all to you and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Now I've often said here uh, that uh, every child of God should desire with all our hearts, every one of us, that our life and labor in this world make a difference in eternity. That's something we say over and over again. You know, your life right now is either, uh, it's either being lived in the will of God and in obedience to the Word of God, and if it is, then it's making a difference. Or, if it is not, if it's being lived for pleasure and the enjoyment of the things in this life, those things are going to mean nothing in eternity. Uh, it's said of Abel in Hebrews 11, if you went back there and read in your Bible, the Bible says about Abel, it says, He being dead, yet speaketh. You know, what, what the Bible is saying is that though his life was short, he lived his life in a way of faithful obedience to God, and the testimony of his life impacted eternity, and it continues to impact our world today. His life made a difference, even though it wasn't long. Our life's labors are either being labored for things that will remain and mean something a million years from now, or your life and its labors will mean nothing to God in eternity one moment after you leave this world. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let me read you verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord has a work for every child of God to do in this world. We must always be abounding in it. Getting the work of the Lord accomplished in our life in this world and laying up treasure in heaven, or we will be ashamed someday when we leave this life behind and we stand before the Lord and all we have is a lifetime of labor for the things of the world and we're going to stand before Him empty-handed and ashamed that we have nothing of eternal value that we invested our life in. Jude gets it right here in verse 22. In our text, he says... Uh, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Making a difference. What a privilege that when we put our life in the hand of the Lord, He could use us to make a difference to something that means something to Him. 
the souls of men and women, boys and girls. You know the greatest work in all the world is the Lord's work. It's why we call it the Great Commission, because it's the great work of God of reaching souls. And it's the greatest work in the world. And whether we're involved in it in a full-time way, or whether you're involved in God's work in this world as a husband or as a wife, as a mother or as a father, as a parent to your children or a child to your parents, whatever your role is in the world, yet God still has a work for you to do, His work. And the Christian life is a full-time life. And God's work is a full-time work for every child of God. And we've got to be involved in the work of the Lord. The Lord Jesus came into this world and He labored and lived and He gave His life for the souls of sin-cursed and hell-destined people just like you and I. If He had not labored for us and not lived for us and died and rose again for us, we would have no hope. There's one one uh, word that we see in our text today that is essential if we're to live and labor and make a difference in reaching the souls of lost men. It's a word that's made the difference in our lives both now and for eternity. It's the word we find in verse 22, the word compassion. You ought to mark that in your Bibles. The word compassion in my 1940-something Winston Dictionary that belonged to my grandfather, it's defined as sorrow or having and showing sorrow for the sufferings of others. The word compassion. But then it also gives you some other words that help to illustrate or to define the word compassion. It uses the word pity, to pity, mercy, tenderness, kindness. These are all other words that help define the word compassion. And you know, when I read those words, pity, mercy, tenderness, kindness, these are words that all describe some type of action. You know, you have to, you have to do something in order to show pity upon someone. You, you, have to, uh, you have to demonstrate tenderness and kindness. You, you do something to someone or for someone to show mercy. These are all, they all have one thing in common. They have some action behind them. There's some action that are, that are attached to those words. These words that make up the word compassion. The word compassion goes beyond the word concern. You can be concerned about something but never do anything about it. Well, I've made that mistake before, haven't you? Some of you guys, you hear something in the house... You say, that sounds like a water drip. That kind of concerns me, but you don't do anything about it until all of a sudden one day it's out in the middle of the floor. And then you've got to do something about it. Now it's a lot, you've got to do a lot more now than you did if you had just done something more than be concerned about it, right? There's a difference in the word compassion and just being concerned about something. You can be concerned about something and keep going right on down the road and never think about it. What's that noise in the car? Huh. I wonder what that is. And all of a sudden, it's broke down somewhere. You can be concerned, but not do anything about it. Concern means to be aware of. But you know, concern and awareness, these are all just simply mental mental reactions to, uh, to situations and circumstances without necessarily a, 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 an actual action being uh, taken uh, in, 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 uh, instead. Uh, compassion, though, goes beyond concern and that it's not simply an awareness of a need, but it takes action to meet the need. Compassion. Compassion has made the difference in your life today if you're saved. Compassion made the difference. Compassion's the difference today in you going to heaven or spending eternity in hell. Compassion is the difference today in you dying lost without Christ or living now as a child of God and having heaven as your home. Compassion. In Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 20, the Bible says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. It was a compassion of God the Father that moved Him to send His only begotten Son into the world. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that He gave. He loved. He knew. He was concerned. He was aware of our situation and circumstance, but He did not stop there. He gave His Son. Compassion made the difference. 
In Matthew chapter 9, you remember those verses of Scripture. Jesus uh, was there and He was uh, ministering among the villages and the cities. And He says in the 35th verse, Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when He saw the multitudes, He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Real compassion will move you. Luke chapter 19 and verse 41, the picture of the Lord Jesus. And when He was come near, He beheld the city and He wept over it. I'm thankful the Lord Jesus, His compassions failed not because He went on to Calvary. He went there and laid down His life as a sacrifice in our place. Died the death we should have died. Suffered the wrath of God for the punishment of our sins. And satiated God, satisfied Him on our behalf. Was buried and rose again. His compassion, His compassion for us made the difference. It'll be compassion in the hearts and lives of God's people that will cause them to live and labor and make a difference in the world in eternity concerning the things that mean something to God. Compassion. It was compassion in action in someone else's heart that made the difference in your soul if you're saved today. Compassion. Someone had compassion towards you. They taught you the gospel, the word of God. They shared it with you. They witnessed it to you. Uh, They lived it before you. They prayed for you. They invited you. They visited you. Somebody had compassion and it made the difference in your life. I hope you'll you'll ask yourself, where is your compassion? J. Hudson Taylor was one of the great missionaries that mission, uh, his mission field was the country of China. J. Hudson Taylor wrote in his biography when he entered China for the first time and began to travel up the river and saw the, on the banks of the river tens of thousands of people who never even heard the name of Jesus. He said one time, I was so overwhelmed by the masses of humanity and, and how I could possibly make a difference that I cried out to the God, God, what is it that you're doing sending me here? Who am I? What can I do? And he said, God spoke to his heart and said, simply have compassion on them and care for them. And you'll make a difference. Where's our compassion? Where is it? Why are we not moved beyond concern? And and why uh, uh, are we simply uh, caring in awareness but not taking actions to make a difference? Where are those who care enough to show kindness to the lost and to those who are struggling or those that are fallen by the wayside? Uh, Why is it that we find it hard to have mercy and be tender-hearted or to share the Lord Jesus Christ in our church? Are there those who would care? Are there those who would live and labor and take action, give and go and make a difference? Psalm Psalm 142 and verse 4. Here's one of the the most tragic verses in the Bible. You say, what's what's one of the most sorrowful verses in all the Bible? Here it is. Psalm 142 verse 4. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. No man cared for my soul. We must care. As we look toward our mission conference, we have to care about what the Lord Jesus cared about. He cared about the souls of men, women, boys, and girls all around the world today. We looked in our Bible uh, at Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, We have that promise. We go forth with the promise of the power of the gospel that God will save souls. But then the Bible said, how can they call upon Him in whom they've not heard? And how can they go unless we send them? Jesus said, who will go for me? We have to care about the things the Lord cared about. How can we make a difference? Well, we have to have compassion. We have to be moved with compassion to make a difference in this world, uh, living and going, laboring and giving, having compassion. What about September 30th, Pastor? Nobody will show up. Maybe nobody will come. We can invite people maybe, but they won't come. Well, I would rather invite a thousand and none come than to invite none and none come. 
have compassion. We've got, to, we've got to be involved again in the things that the Lord lived for and died for. Let me give you these things quickly. Number one, understanding the needs of men leads to compassion. Understanding the needs of men leads to compassion. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know. I just want to remind you of these things. The compassion of our Lord is our example. Matthew 18, 11, he said, For the Son of Man has come to say that which was lost. That's why, he's, that's why he came, to say that which was lost. Sometimes we live through this world with having the same purpose he has, but we never think about it. Never show any concern about it. We never live or labor for the things now that God has given us to live and labor for, for reaching the souls of men with the gospel of Christ. Romans 3.23 tells us all men are lost because of sin. All lost. We just can't appreciate it, can we? How can we appreciate it without compassion that everyone we meet, everyone you see, are lost because of their sin? Lost. They're dead spiritually and separated from the life of the Lord Jesus, all without strength, all unable to help themselves, lost. We have to have compassion to understand the lost, the lostness of men, all men, all people. You say, Pastor, my family members, we're all sinners. We're lost if we're not saved. We're on our way to hell if we're not promised heaven. We're lost. Our family, our friends that we love and care for and want to spend time with, if they're unsaved, they're lost. They're on their way to hell today. If their life ended today, they'd step out into a Christless eternity. They're lost. Our loved ones, our children, lost without Christ and hopelessly destined for hell. We know it. We're aware of it. We're concerned about it. But that's not enough. We must have compassion. We must rise up and have our hearts filled with compassion and reach them. Ask the Lord to fill our life with His compassion. It's there. He's there in our life. It's there, the compassion. We have to ask Him to allow that compassion to control our life, direct our actions. Compassion. Ask God to fill our lives with compassion. Ezekiel 34, verse 16 the Bible said, I will seek that which is lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which is sick. That's what we need and God will do when we have compassion. I want you to see a second thing. Remembering what God did for you will lead us to compassion. Saved. You like that song? Saved, saved, saved. That's good, isn't it? Saved. How can we explain what, how much is up and means in that one term? Saved. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ today, you're saved. Eternally, completely saved. Thankful I was saved when I was 11 years old. And nothing I could have done would, could have saved me if the Lord Jesus Christ had not saved me. Saved. And now that I've been saved all these many years, He's always sustained me. And all through the years, He's never failed me. And all through the years, He's been merciful and He's been compassionate toward me. You know what He wants me to do? I don't have to have a great theological education and I don't have to be in the ministry. All I have to do is simply share with other people who He is and what He's done for me. Not ashamed of who He is. Not ashamed of what He'll be for others and what He's done for us. In our text today, in verse 21, the Bible said, keep yourselves in the love of God. That's, that's what He's talking about here. He's saying, uh, work to remember what He's done for you. Remember the love that He showed for you and what He's done for you and keep asking Him to keep compassion alive in your heart and life so that you can make a difference. I want to give you this third one. An awareness of coming judgment will bring compassion into our lives. An awareness of coming judgment. Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to turn there and read a couple verses. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25. We know there are various types of teachings here and eschatologically or in the future where these things fall into the timelines are things that we must give special attention to and study. But... In the end, we know that for all lost souls, there's one place they're headed to. It's a lake of fire. 
And God's going to deal with the lost at different stages and different periods of time as we move forward. But then there'll be one great white throne judgment where all the dead will stand before God, the small and the great. And the Bible speaks about eternity in the lake of fire. Verse 31 of Matthew chapter 25, the Bible said, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of glory. There's, there's a Savior the Lord Jesus Christ, who's someday going to be a sovereign judge, just, holy, and righteous. He's going, to, he's going to do what must be done and what only can be done. The Bible said He's a consuming fire, our God. And He can't help but be holy and righteous, and sin and unrighteousness cannot help to be consumed in His presence And sin cannot help but flee His presence. It can't stand in the presence of His holiness and righteousness. Someday He's going to sit on a throne. And the Bible goes on to say in that particular passage down in the 46th verse, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment. But the righteous unto life eternal. Judgment. Knowing that there's a judgment. knowing, Knowing the judgment of God should should bring compassion into our lives. In Luke chapter 16, we have it on a more personal level, a a real level. This This is not a passage now that's prophetic. This is not something that's way out there in the future. No, this is reality for a person who leaves this world lost without Christ at this very moment. Luke chapter 16, the Bible goes on to say in the 19th verse, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments. The Bible says that was reality for a man who lived 2,000 years ago. And it's reality for every soul that leaves this world today without Christ. In hell, they lift up their eyes, being in torments. Hebrews 9.27, back there it says, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The judgment. You say, Pastor, will lost souls spend eternity in torment and punishment? Will Will they be condemned to the lake of fire? In John chapter 3, this is a verse with such great extremes of truth. In John 3.16, you see compassion. Unfailing compassion. The love of God in giving His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But in verse number, verse number 18, the Bible says, He that believeth on Him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You say, Pastor, will that law spend an eternity in the lake of fire? Will they be condemned? Will God's wrath be poured out upon them? Listen, as far as God is concerned, it's not, it's not if and maybe... It's already, and in God's heart and mind, it's not they will have condemnation and they will know punishment. They're already under the condemnation of God. The wrath of God already abides upon them. They've got to be saved from it because it's already there because of sin. Because of sin. I hope you'll think about those that you know today that are already condemned, already under the wrath of God. It's abiding on them. I'm thankful compassion makes a difference. Compassion of the Father, sending the Son made a difference. The compassion of the Son, surrendering and going to the cross and sacrificing His life for us made a difference. The compassion of someone in your life sharing the Lord Jesus Christ with you made a difference. Compassion in you can make a difference in the life of someone else. Compassion. You have compassion. Will you allow the Lord to love lost souls through you, to live and labor, 
to give and to go with a heart filled with compassion because it's compassion that we need to really make a difference. Without it, without it, nothing much is going to happen. What we need is compassion. The Bible says back in Jude, that 22nd verse, and if some have compassion, making a difference. I want my life to make a difference. I don't want to live, and it had meant nothing for me to live. When I get to heaven, I want it to have meant something to the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for me for the glory of God that here's, here's, a, here's an object of my grace that I could use, something that menial, something that trivial, I could use that and made a difference in eternity. Compassion. Let's bow our heads. We have a word of prayer together today. Compassion. As we think about our mission revival, it will be compassion that makes the difference in that mission revival for lost souls. If we don't have compassion, we won't grow and we won't give and we won't increase. We have to have compassion. On September 30th, when we have our final roundup Sunday of the month, it'll be compassion that makes a difference. Compassion to pray for and to invite and to encourage and to do what God would have us to do to try to bring souls here under the sound of God's word that day. Compassion making a difference. I hope today, if you're here and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you wouldn't be ashamed today to say, I'm lost, I need to be saved. I want someone to take the Bible, show me how I can be saved. If you're 11 years old or older, or any age at all here today, you say, I've never received Jesus as my Savior, never asked God to forgive my sins, which sent His Son to die in the, on that cross. I want to be saved today. If you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I hope today you slip out of your seat and say, I want to be saved. I want Brother Evan or Miss Angie or somebody to take God's Word and show me how I can be saved. Man or woman, boy or girl, I need to trust Christ today. I'm lost. I need to be saved. Would you come today while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, folks are praying, just slip out of your seat and come and folks will see you and we'll meet you there with God's Word. Would you come today? I'm lost. I need to be saved. I'm not sure if I died today I would go to heaven. No one's ever took, talked to me about that. No one's ever shared that with me. I need to know about this. I want to know. Would you be willing to slip out of your seat right now and come? I need to know. I want to know. Maybe you're here today and you know the Lord is your Savior. I just want to ask you today. Are you living and laboring for that which will mean something in eternity? Are your life making a difference? It can when we put it in the hand of God. When we allow Him to have compassion and use us and we move beyond just concern and awareness and take action. It can be so simple. I'm not talking about becoming a missionary, preacher, pastor, missionary, evangelist. God may call somebody here to do that, but I'm not talking about just doing that. I'm talking about praying for your family and your neighbors and passing out a gospel track and getting on the phone or dropping by somebody's house and inviting them to come and saying, hey, you're wanted at our church service and uh, desiring uh, with all your heart, having a burdened heart to see our seats filled with families that need to know the Lord in these last perilous days before God sends His Son back into this world, we've got to have compassion to make a difference. Would you ask the Lord today to give you that compassion? Be obedient to Him. Maybe you need to come and slip out of your seat and pray. You can. Maybe you need to just ask Him right where you are. Give me compassion that makes a difference. Let's pray. Father, we ask in Jesus' name to have your way. Somebody today that needs to come. Lord, for salvation, we pray they'll slip out of their seat and come as we get ready to stand and sing. And Lord, I pray for all of us that know you as our Savior. May you give us compassion, Lord, that will make a difference. And Lord, maybe nobody else in this world will ever know about it. But God, you'll know about it. And God, you keep the record. And Lord, your accounts and your books are right. And God, someday in eternity, it'll mean something. And God, we just pray you'd use our lives. Lord, in the smallest, humblest of ways, or God, in the boldest, most courageous ways, give us compassion to make a difference. God, give our church compassion for this mission conference to reach the world for Christ. God, you loved us and died and gave yourself for the souls of men. You live today for the souls of men. Help us to live for what you died for. 
give us compassion as we pray about our giving and our going and our living and our laboring. And God, help us to have compassion between now and the last day of the month that we might see souls reach for Christ. Well, we just pray today, give us compassion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand together and turn to him. Hymn number 12. And I want to invite you to say yes to Jesus today. Slip out of your seat and come right now if you need to come. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, the Lord's been dealing with me. I've been saved, but I've never followed the Lord in believer's baptism. I'd like to know more about being baptized and becoming a member of this church. I'd like to know more about becoming a member of this church. I, I know this is where God wants me and our family. I need to just go ahead. We need as a family to discuss that. Maybe we can meet together. But maybe you'd like to just come and let that be known and pray about that. Um, compassion. Ask the Lord to give us compassion. Say yes to the Lord today as we sing on the very first verse. Hymn 12, verse number 1. Seen verse number two, verse two. been just a joy to be in God's house this morning, be able to spend time together. And I just prayed the Lord would give us uh, that compassion to make a difference. And I appreciate uh, the message this morning. We look forward to being back tonight and uh, hearing another good Bible message. We hope you'll uh, be here with us again tonight. But we're going to finish this morning with a word of prayer. Brother Doug, you pray for us, please.